Tonight on the program, as the Apex Summit is around the corner, we look into the highlights from its theme, official logo, and even the future of food. And the latest episode of our documentary series, Far From Home, where we talk to a Thai worker who was lured into working as a telescammer in Cambodia and how she managed to survive. Sadika, I'm Nad Bunag and welcome to This Week with Thai PBS World. Next week is a big week for Thailand as the country is the host economy for the APEC Summit 2022. Here's what to expect and what you also need to know about the summit. APEC, or the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, is a regional economic forum with 21 member economies in the Asia-Pacific, which promotes free trade across the region. The 21 member economies are the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei Darussalam, the Philippines, Thailand, China, Hong Kong, Chinese Taipei, Mexico, Papua New Guinea, Chile, Peru, Vietnam, and Russia. The main theme for this year's APEC Summit is Open, Connect and Balance, meaning facilitating trade and investment, reconnecting the region and promoting inclusive and sustainable growth with a focus on the biocircular green economy model as part of Thailand's strategy for post-pandemic recovery. The model integrates three mainstream approaches to sustainability, aiming for a more holistic and balanced approach to advance economic, environmental and social goals. As to who will be attending the APEC summit, U.S. President Joe Biden will be skipping the event, but Vice President Kamala Harris will be attending on his behalf to underscore the United States' commitment to economic cooperation in the Indo-Pacific region. French President Emmanuel Macron has officially confirmed his attendance, along with Chinese President Xi Jinping and Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen. As for the preparation, about 30,000 police officers will be on duty for the summit on November 18th and the 19th, including about 3,000 posted at the Queen Surikit National Convention Center. 2,000 military personnel will also be stationed in and around the convention center to beef up security for foreign leaders and delegates. Police will also be posted in and around Bangkok throughout the summit. Among the police will be an explosive ordnance disposal unit, which will be supported by dogs trained in detecting explosives, explosive disposal robots, and a blast mitigation vehicle, which can withstand the detonation of 1.5 kilograms of high explosives. As for the traffic, the road in front of the Queen Sirigit National Convention Center from the Athol intersection to the Rama 4th intersection will be completely closed to all traffic around the clock from November 16th to the 19th. And the MRT station at the Convention Center will also be closed during the period. When we talk about APEC, we also cannot forget to talk about its logo. And what you can see is actually a chalom or a traditional bamboo basket. Our reporter Dirapa Bunyata talked to the designer of this logo about his inspiration. In fact, he's actually an architecture student from Julalogon University. The logo of APEC 2022 is the brainchild of the student of architecture at Jalalongkorn University, who finds the combination of art and science fascinating. At first, um, I am into drawing, like painting and everything, and then in the high school, I am learning in the the gifted program is all about the mathematics and scientific, so 
So when it comes together, the scientific and the, the art, then when, when it comes together, it is the architecture. It's when the, the art meets the, 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 truth, the truth, yes. Like, like when you design things, you have to consider about how to make it possible and how to make it authentic. There were 598 local submissions in the APEC 2022 Thailand Local Design Competition. The design by Shivanon won the prize. He said he chose the bamboo basket because it represents both the Thai and APEC identities and can convey even deeper meaning beyond the craft work. It's called Shalom. Shalom is uh, our bamboo basket that we have used from the ancient time, but we actually we don't use it nowadays. When it is the handcraft and how it made in Thailand, it's it is what is reflects the, the, the Thai identity. And and then the graphics and then the the characters of the bamboo basket is um, connects to the apex identity. Like um, this is the bamboo stripe that woven together. The bamboo stripe is reflects the, the balance of the, 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 the BCG economy. We are emphasizing this year the, the topics of the meetings, of course. And how it woven is all about the connection of the economies. And the, the last one is how it grow into the sky, it's point up to the sky. It is about the growth of the economies, yes. It took Shivanon two months to complete the final draft. For the first month, he focused on the conceptual design and visualization. After the first draft of the logo was submitted, he got comments back from the committee. So, in the second month, he designed the final version of the logo accordingly. When the professor called me, like, you won the prize, and it's unbelievable. Like, the feeling is like the dreams come true. Because one time, um, the, imagine if I, I, I win the prize, how, how big it, ha it, it will be. Like, it will be like in the in the meeting rooms, like every every leaders of the nations comes together and like have this this symbol of Thailand represent the meeting, and that's very great. And then it's come to the real life. It is it is the value that that matters because everyone in the world can see it. It's not just in Thailand, it, it is international. It's very fulfilling feel, feelings at that time. Yes, and yeah, so <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> While many people cannot see how the APEC Summit relates to their daily lives, Shewanon sees it differently. As we are the host of the APEC meeting this year, is very um, important because because when we are the host, we can like push the issue that has been in our country into the world and improve this issue into like international and and is very effective. Like like everyone can can come together and brainstorm and help to improve the economies. The APEC Summit is improve our economies and the our economies improve our lives. Shewanon said he studied many projects of famous architects and found it really inspiring. For him, there are artists who turn their designs into reality. He has two more years to go before graduation and is hopeful that he will be able to work in architecture Zero Power reporting for Thai PBS World.
During the APEC summit in Bangkok, food security will also be one of the topics discussed. Thailand also aims to promote future food as well. But what is future food to begin with? Let's find out more with Giti Patin Sukti. คำว่าอาหารอนาคตคนคิดว่าแบบต้องกินอนาคตต้องกินแบบพรุ่งนี้หรือเปล่าอะไรอย่างเงี้ยครับเป็นอาหารนักบินอวกาศเป็นอาหารวิทยาศาสตร์หรือเปล่าอะไรอย่างเงี้ยครับพี่ครับแต่ว่าจริงๆแล้วอาหารอนาคตคือกินทุกวันนี้เพื่อโลกของเราในอนาคต Food security, food safety, and sustainability agricultural development have long been global concerns. As the Asia Pacific region works to overcome the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, one of the APEC missions is to advance actions that ensure that people will eat well while taking care of the environment. That is the definition of future food. This year, the policy partnership on food security is focused on developing concrete actions to deliver the APEC Food Security Roadmap of 2030. จริงๆแล้วเนี่ยอาหารในอนาคตเนี่ยก็คืออาหารที่เรากินอยู่ทุกๆวันนี้เพียงแต่ว่าเราคิดใหม่ทําใหม่ในบริบทของการเลือกวัตถุดิบการแปรรูปอาหารการปรุงอาหารการจัดการกระจายอาหารกับการจัดการกับผลกระทบหรือของเสียจากการบริโภคการแปรรูปอาหารที่ที่เทสบัตเนี่ยเราก็เลยใช้แนวคิดหรือว่านิยามตัวหนึ่งเขาเรียกว่าอาหารนิยามของอาหารแห่งอนาคตก็เรียกว่า 3D นะครับอาหารที่เรายังบริโภคอยู่ทุกวันนี้เนี่ยยังจะต้อง1ก็คือดีต่อใจเรียกว่าทานแล้วเนี่ยอร่อยราคาเข้าถึงได้ก็เรียกว่าอาหารที่เรายังกินอยู่กระเพราข้าวผัดก๋วยเตี๋ยวแต่ทํายังไงให้มันดีต่อใจมากยิ่งขึ้น2ดีต่อสุขภาพมากยิ่งขึ้นยังไงในการเปลี่ยนวิธีการปรุงไหมการจัดการเลือกวัตถุดิบใหม่ๆไหมที่จะตอบโจทย์โภชนาการกับสุขภาพของเราเนี่ยไปในอนาคตมากยิ่งขึ้นมิติที่3ก็คือดีกับโลกสังคมชุมชนดีกับโลกสังคมชุมชนในที่นี้เนี่ยเราอาจจะไม่ได้ทันคิดว่าทุกๆวันนี้ที่เรากินกับเรียกว่าจากปากเราเนี่ยจากจานเนี่ยมันสามารถส่งผลกระทบไปถึงเรียกว่าห่วงโซ่อาหารที่ต่อคล้องกันไปถึงคนต้นน้ําไปถึงผืนป่าต้นน้ําหรือสิ่งแวดล้อม As the APEC 2022 host economy, Thailand is trying to promote future food through a contest of the future food production under the campaign "Play to Planet." This dish is for the environment to demonstrate the readiness and potential of Thai food to become part of the country's soft power. The competition was aimed at developing menus for the future, which emphasize sustainability with a blend of Thai elements. Around 2,000 teams of contestants had a chance to create new dishes under the guidance of culinary experts, with only 21 teams qualifying for the final round. In the final round. Four of the 21 future Thai dishes will be selected to be served, along with a selection of dishes by an internationally renowned Thai chef who has recently been appointed a sustainable food ambassador by Feed Up at UN, Chum Pon Teng Prai, at APEC 2022's gala dinner. The winning teams will receive prizes with a total value of 2.5 million baht, according to Sandeep. The criteria for this competition are the food's appearance, taste, and dish portion 50%, while another 40% focuses on the competitors' ideas of upscale business, showing that their work will not end at their one dish in the contest, but can be produced. Some may expand their businesses to an international level, while some can create an awareness about food sustainability. Santi hopes that APEC Future Foods for Sustainability is not a project that will end after the contest, but that all competitors will have a chance to develop their food production to be more sustainable. We will find ways to make it easier for them to develop their food production and if there is a team that has a point of view that will continue, we will want to help them to continue. Everyone will be able to ควรจะสามารถที่จะ
ดําเนินทางแล้วก็สร้างฟิวเจอร์ฟู้ดได้แบบของตัวเองแล้วเราก็จะได้รอสนับสนุนเขาให้มันไปสร้าง Impact กับด้านอาหารของเราไปในอนาคตด้วยกันอันนี้ก็คือความตั้งใจของทีมผู้จัดทุกทุกคนนะครับกิติพัชเชิญสุขจิต reporting for Thai PBS World And these dishes look very interesting. And now let's have a look at the other stories in our weekly roundup. The National Broadcasting and Telecommunications Commission, or the NBTC, agreed to set aside only 600 million baht for the live broadcast rights of the World Cup 2022 in Thailand. However, the live broadcast rights are estimated to cost over 1.6 billion baht. The Sports Authority of Thailand has offered to secure financing for the rest of the cost from private sponsors. The budget allocation has sparked much criticism from MPs, academics, and consumer groups, as the fund is meant for research and development for the broadcast industry. The Interior Ministry withdrew for review a controversial draft ministerial regulation that would pave the way for limited foreign land ownership in exchange for investments in Thailand. The regulation was previously approved by the cabinet on October 25th, which allows foreigners to buy up to 0.16 hectares of land if they have an investment of at least 40 million baht for a period of at least three years. The regulation has come under heavy criticism by the opposition MPs and government critics, who accuse the government of attempting to sell off the country. Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha and his Cambodian counterpart Hun Sen pledged to step up cooperation to crack down on call center scams using Cambodia as their operation base. Many Thais have fallen victims to scams that mostly operate from s i a n u k v i l l e a coastal province of Cambodia. With cooperation from Thailand, Cambodia authorities have been cracking down on the scams and helped rescue many Thais lured into working for the illegal operation. The Royal Thai Police are in the process of revising the entire management of service pistols and the welfare gun program, under which police officers can buy their own guns at lower than market prices. The current efforts follow the mass murder at a childcare center in n o n g b u l u m p u Province on October 6, committed by a former, now deceased police officer, in which 36 people died, mostly young children. And every year, many Thai workers decide to leave their hometowns to seek for a better quality of life in a different country, whether it's for higher pay or for experience. Unfortunately, not everyone is lucky. In this episode of our documentary series, Far From Home, we talk to a woman who was lured into working as a telescammer in Cambodia, as well as how she managed to survive. คือดีไหมดีตรงที่ว่าพวกหนูไม่ต้องอยู่แบบทาสแล้วเงินไม่ได้ไม่เป็นไรดีกว่าทำไปเรื่อยๆแล้วก็มันก็ไม่ได้อะไรก็ไม่รู้ว่าจะได้กลับเมื่อไหร่หรือจะต้องเจออะไรอีกในวันข้างหน้าไม่ไม่แล้วจะบอกด้วยว่ามันไม่มีอะไรที่ได้มาง่ายๆเลยในโลกนี้ตาร์ recall the day when Cambodian immigration police Raided her office slash dorm in Sihanou View to rescue illegal workers, mostly Thais, that had been working for a telephone scam operation. Ta was out of work during the pandemic. She moved back home to Ratchaburi and trying to find different ways to earn some money. 
She said she could have just worked on a plantation with her family, but she thought there had to be some other better ways to make life happen. She wanted to run a small business of her own. To do that, she had to find some funding first. So when her friend sent her a job ad found on social media, the offer caught her attention right away. เราก็อ่านไม่เห็นน่าสนใจเนาะเงินเดือน 24,000 ว่าสนใจทำงานแอดมินอัตราเงินเดือน 24,000 บาทต่อเดือนกินอยู่ฟรีพร้อมที่พักซึ่งเราคิดว่าเฮ้ยถ้าไม่เสียค่าค่ากินไม่เสียค่าที่พักค่าเราเหลือเต็มๆนะตอนนั้นถามว่ารู้ไหมรู้รู้ว่าเป็นแค่เขตปล่อยเปรตไม่คิดว่าจะมาไกลขนาดนี้ค่ะ Next thing she knew, she was trekking through a sugar cane plantation, crossing the border from Thailand to cassava farm in Cambodia illegally. They told her that she would have to enter Cambodia illegally just when they dropped her and the others off by the border. That told herself that it was too late to turn back and nothing else she could do. After a couple of bumpy road trips, Ta arrived at a hotel in Phnom Penh. The place was called a hotel, but it was not open to the public, and it had 24-hour security guards. Ta thought that she would be working in an online customer service job there, but there was no job for two weeks. They said the system was not ready. เขาแก่บอกว่างานตรงนี้ไม่พร้อมเขาเอาไปฝากพวกเขาไว้ก่อนเราไม่เข้าใจหรอกคำว่าเราเข้าใจแค่คําว่าฝากแต่เราไม่รู้เราเรายังไม่รู้พื้นถึงคําว่าขายขายต่อไม่มีใครที่ลงทุนแล้วยอมเสียเปล่าเราก็ยังไม่รู้เก็บข้าวของเรียบร้อยเลยเราไม่มีฟรีลันช์และการทำงานออนไลน์ผู้ผลิตเสริมจอบถูกนำไปเป็นการทำลายผู้ผลิตสกิมตาและเพื่อนร่วมงานได้ถูกต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้องต้อง which are able to scam money out of the victims, from phony investment invitations to basic scams, social engineering or deceiving victims to just wire the money to their bank accounts. The teller scam or the so-called call center gangs in Thai context stole 1.6 billion baht from thousands of people in Thailand last year, many of whom were left penniless, falling victim to the scam. Actually, people on both ends of the phone line are victims of this form of transnational organized crime, where one of them loses their money and the other their freedom. Those trafficked to the ring are left with no choice but to become scammer, while millions of baht goes into the pockets of the ring leaders. Reluctant scam callers are paid a low wage and often fall prey by debt manipulation and ultimately become stuck in forced labor. ทำงานตั้งแต่5้าทุ่มนะคะเลิก11บเอ็ดโมงเช้าสิชั่วโมงเต็มได้พักแค่ครึ่งชั่วโมงคือตีตีสี่สามสิบถึงตีห้าแค่คือให้กินข้าวตีมะข้าวเที่ยงก็ได้ค่ะวันอาทิตย์คุณทํางาน6ชั่วโมงได้หยุด6ชั่วโมงหยุดงานใช่หยุดกันกําหนดคำว่าเคยกําหนดของเขาก็คือเหมือนประมาณว่า3มครั้งต่อเดือนหรือ4ครั้งมันไม่ใช่ค่ะมันคิดค่าปรับเขาไล่คุณออกคุณจะต้องออกเดี๋ยวนี้โดยที่คุณจะต้องเสียค่าปรับทั้งหมด 1,000 กับอีก30ดอนซึ่งเรายังไม่ได้เงินอะไรกันสักบาทตั้งแต่มาอยู่อ่ะแล้วเราจะเอาที่ไหนไปเสียท่านแล้วท่านฉันไม่เสียให้คุณเขาก็จะเอาคนอ่ะมาอุ้มก็คือคุณไม่มีวันไม่มีวันที่จะเห็นได้เห็นเงินคุณที่คุณทำอ่ะ
Those who fail to meet the work expectations and are unable to pay the arbitrary fines sometimes become victims of enforced disappearance. People facing this situation, such as Ta and her colleagues, must try to run. They mostly do so by reporting to authorities for deportation. Ta earned a total of only 100 US dollars from the scamming job after being there for roughly six weeks. Herself and other victims of human trafficking working for the telefraud ring were already under the protection of the authorities and awaiting repatriation when Thai PBS World first interviewed her. We follow up on her and found out that she was back in Ratchaburi and was trying to start her own little catering business. We were supposed to meet her on one of the weekends and catch up. That called back and cancelled our meeting, saying her business partner had won some money on the lottery and so wanted to take a pause on the catering work. We were supposed to keep in touch, but we have never heard from her again. All her given contacts that were working before are now disconnected or no one is picking up their phone. And that wraps up tonight's edition of This Week with Thai PBS World. Join us every Friday at 10.30 p.m. only on Thai PBS. And don't forget to follow us on social media, including our website, thaipbsworld.com, for all the latest updates as well as analyses. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Swadika.